Hey guys, since I don't post food illustrations often and I get requests asking to paint desserts, I just want to remind you guys of my latest Skillshare class on this raspberry cake slice. On Skillshare, I demonstrate my paintings in a more detailed and slower pace so I can be more thorough when it comes to complex food illustrations like this one. Whereas I tend to speed up my process more on YouTube since I try to limit the length of my videos so I can keep up with the consistency of uploading. I tend to get a lot of requests for subtitles and I just want to mention that Skillshare offers subtitles for all of their classes including mine in English, German, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. The classes are also ad-free and if you've never been a member you can click the link in my description box for a free trial. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting a mini Christmas bundt cake. Let's get right into it and let's begin by sketching it out. On the bottom left side is the reference image that I used to create this and then I'll be adding elements to make it a bit more Christmassy. It's always easier for me to start with straight edges so I draw out like a pretty chubby looking trapezium and then I rounded the corners creating the base shape of the bun cake. I just want to make sure that everything is centered first before I add on the details. Once it's centered, I want to make sure that the shape is nice and neat and I also want to make sure that the sides are more or less even. Here I want to divide up the sections where the hole of the bun cake is at the top, the middle and then the bottom where the color of the cake is more yellow. After that, I want to lightly divide up the pattern of the bun cake. You can see from the reference image that there's a big and small section which goes around the whole bun cake, but it's actually quite difficult to do that all at once and make it even. So I want to make the big sections first. This way it's a bit easier to divide it up into even areas. Then I drew on the smaller ones in between. I also made the top part of each section puff up by drawing closed curved lines in between those sections. By the way, if you don't want to draw it out, I will also have this outline available in my coffee shop. I want to also do the same by connecting each of the sections with curved lines at the bottom and this will just separate the two sections of where the cake touched the pan as it was baking and the bottom where it puffed up. So this is pretty much the base shape of the cake that I'm going for. Next I'm going to add icing dripping down the cake and I want to make sure that this icing look a little bit more thick so I add an additional line at the top and then erase the cake outline. Next I'm going to add three berries at the top and I will just draw them out as circles and I'm also going to add a couple of leaves for the Christmassy touch. Before I paint everything, I just want to make sure that the lines are as clean as I can make them. Okay, so next let's go over the colors I'll be using. Firstly, this is Terra Verde by Holbein, Mineral Violet by Holbein, Sepia by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Quinciana by Daniel Smith, New Gamboche by Daniel Smith, Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke, Vermilion by Holbein, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Grey of Grey by Holbein, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins. Let's begin to paint. I'm going to first use a mix of Titanium Gold Ochre with New Gamboge and I'm going to use this color mixture in a medium to thin consistency to paint the base color for the bottom part of the cake. Next, I'm going to add a touch of burnt umber to the color mixture and I'm going to use this to paint the left side which is where the shadow is and I'm still using a thin consistency here and I'm going to slowly build it up. Mm -hmm. 
Once the color starts to settle, it will lighten. So I want to increase the vibrancy by using the same yellow mix and also adding the darker mixture as well until I'm satisfied with the saturation. Next, I'm going to work on the midsection of the cake. I'm starting to paint the base color by using the same yellow mix as before. And I'm painting around three sections at a time so I can work on a damp surface. While the surface is still a little bit damp, I'm going to add a mix of Quince Sienna with Burnt Umber to the previous yellow mix and I'm going to dot it in while leaving out some of the top section yellow and also where the connecting line is. Now I'm going to apply the same yellow color for the rest of the cake. I'm using a medium consistency to a thin consistency still. To apply the paint, I like to tap it in. This way, I'm going to create a bit of an unevenness since some areas might have more paint than others. Just like the previous section, I'm going to add on the slightly darker mix from the addition of Quinciana and Burnt Umber with the yellow. And as you can see, I left out the connection line so we can keep all the different sections separate. Next, I want to darken parts of the line. I'm using the same mixture but in a slightly thicker consistency of the Quinn Sienna and Burnt Umber with less yellow as you can see. I'm painting the top part and also the little section so I can make them a little bit more bumpy looking. Then I soften some of the blend using a clean damp brush. On the right hand side of a couple of these sections, as you can see, from the reference image, there's a slight reflection of light. So I use a really thin consistency of mineral violet that's barely visible to just indicate those areas. Next, I want to build on the color and the texture. I'm still using the same mix, but just layering it on. This is from Burnt Umber and Quinciana. Here, I'm trying to indicate the darker areas and also trying to define those sections to build the form. So I'm placing it between the lines on the right hand side and minimizing the amount of dark areas in comparison to the left side where I place it on larger areas as it's in shadow. I'm also going to do the same thing for the line at the bottom, but this time I use a slightly darker mixture with Quinciana, Burnt Umber, and a little bit of sepia this time. This is something that I'm just going to keep layering on little by little while tapping my brush to keep the really subtle texture. And while doing this, I also want to leave out a bit of that light area where I've indicated the purple highlight. As you can see, I'm always layering very lightly with thin consistencies so I don't accidentally overwork an area and it leaves more space for mistakes if you accidentally paint over parts you're not supposed to. On the right hand side, I decided to add a little bit more purple to the reflection so it's a bit more visible and it will remind me of the spatial indication. Next, I'm going to intentionally add on larger textures. As you can see, I'm using the previous mix but with added sepia to darken the color and I just add on dots, then soften one side of those dots in random places. Next, I want to accentuate those textures further and I'm working on the section in the middle first by using a mix of Burnt Umber and Quinciana. And what I'm trying to do is to go around those little tiny sections that I've dotted earlier and then softening the surrounding area. After that, I'm going to work on the areas on the right hand side. So I remember to keep working very lightly with the same color. And even though I didn't paint on freckles in those sections, I'm just going to paint using the same color for the rest of the area while leaving out the purple reflection. Now I'm going to go back to the mid section again and I'm still using the same color but I'm adding it more to the left hand side because I want that part to be more in shadow and I also want to bring up the saturation. And then I'm going to apply the same thing for the sections on the left as well. As you can see on this section, I'm using a slightly thicker consistency and I also left out some white negative space for the base color to show up. 
Then I'm going to keep building on the shadows using the same mixture with added sepia this time. I'm going to place this on the lines, especially for the sections on the left side of the cake. As I'm slowly building up the layers and depth of color, I'm always looking back and forth to the reference image to give me ideas on where some of the textures or certain shadows are. It's not something to copy fully or accurately, it just gives me some ideas on how to further enhance the detail of my painting. You may also notice that my cake in general looks a bit more round than the ones in the reference image. This is completely by choice and it's just my interpretation of the painting. Yours doesn't need to be as round and you can make it as true to the reference image as you would like. Going back to the painting, on the right hand side I want the color generally to have more of a yellow tint to make it a bit lighter. So I'm going back to the first mix of New Gamboge with Titanium Gold Ochre. But at the same time, I also want to build on the shadows, especially on the lines since they're the deepest areas. Going back to the left again, I'm going to use the dark brown mix with added sepia and I'm placing a slightly thicker consistency on the left of each section and slightly lighter consistency on the right side of each section whilst leaving the mid portion lighter and this will create the round form of the bun cake. I also use the same mix to glaze over the large textures to warm the tone a bit more since they're quite muted in relation to the rest of the cake. So here I'm just going to keep layering on more color little by little using the same method until I'm happy with the distribution of color and values. I feel like the form is slowly getting there, so now we're going to go back to adding textures. I'm using the same dark brown mix from Sepia, Burnt Umber, and a bit of Quinciana to just paint on more dots. This time I'm painting really tiny ones and I'm placing it around the top part of the cake. Since I've left out the bottom of the cake for a while now, it's looking quite plain in comparison to the top. So here I'm adding a bit more saturation using the yellow. This time I added a bit of the brown mix to the yellow to make it a bit more muted on the left. Then I use a thin consistency of the dark brown mix and I switch to my tiny brush here to paint really small textures. I'm going to add one final touch to the cake for now by using the dark brown mix again and this will just increase the contrast in value on the left hand side. I'm fairly happy with the cake for now so I'm going to move on to paint the icing. For the base color of the icing, I use a mix of grey of grey and titanium gold ochre and I'm going to use a very heavy load to spread this color around in a thin consistency. Once I've covered the whole area, I want this to be completely dry so I'm just going to use a hair dryer. This way I can work on a dry surface to paint on the shadows. For the shadows, I'm first going to use the same mix with added titanium gold ochre in the ratio. And I'm painting this on the left hand side because I want the left side to be darker than the right. And just like the cake portion before, I'm placing most of the shadows on the lines where the section of the cakes are. And then I'm going to soften the edges using a clean damp brush. For the shadows on the right hand side, I'm placing it on the lines just like before but I'm painting it on a smaller area in comparison to the left because I still want the right side to be lighter than the left. To build interest, I always like to play around with the hue of the shadows for light colored objects. So I added grey of grey to add to the lines on the left and as for the whole of the bunt cake, I used the previous yellow mix with added new gamboge. We're not quite done with the icing yet because it still looks really flat and I just want to dry it off completely. To make this pop, I want to add shadows underneath the icing on the cake. So I'm going to go back in with a dark brown mix from Quinciana, Burnt Umber and Sepia and paint a line underneath the icing. Thank you. 
After I finish painting on the line, I want to soften some areas and I also want to extend the shadows using a slightly lighter brown from a mix of Quinn Sienna and Burnt Umber. And I also want to soften the edges. With the color that was left on my brush, I'm just going to add this to parts of the shadow on the icing for a little bit more hue variation. I also added this to the whole of the bun cake. For more variation in the hue, I also add a really thin consistency of mineral violet mixed with grey of grey and also a touch of new gamboge. Once I'm happy with the definition of the icing, I'm going to move on to paint the berries. For the base color of the berries, I'm going to use a medium to thin consistency of vermilion and I'm just painting on the base color while leaving out a section on the right hand side as the highlight. After I've covered the base color, I'm going to dry it off so I can move on to the second layer where I'll be using a thicker consistency of the same color. I'm painting this using the same approach by leaving out the top right hand side of each berry with negative space so now the white highlight and parts of the base color peeks through. Next I want to build the color further, so this time I'm going to add Crimson Lake to the Vermilion and I'm going to use a fairly thick consistency to paint the bottom left part of the berries and then soften the blend using a damp brush. If you notice, I also switched to my smaller brush here to make it much easier to control the areas where I'm painting. If I feel parts of the highlights are a bit too big, I would soften the blend just by using a clean damp brush and to make the area of the highlight smaller. After this, I want everything to completely dry so I can see which areas have faded. As you can see, the one in the middle is a bit too light so I added more vermilion and I also add a slightly thicker consistency of the Crimson Lake mixture, this time with added sepia and I place this for the darker shadows. For the base color of the leaf, I'm going to use a mixture of Terre Verde with New Gamboge in a light to medium consistency. I actually finished painting the leaves but I realized I forgot to record this. So you'll see the finished result here but I'm just going to erase it so I can show you the steps again. So this is as much color as I can take off here. I'm just starting with the base color again and I want this to completely dry before adding on the details. Once it's completely dry, I'm going to add Terre Verde in the ratio to make it a bit more green and I'm using a medium consistency here to paint the midrib as well as the veins. For the veins though, I'm painting thick lines so I leave out some negative space in between. Next, I'm going to build the value further by adding more Terre Verde, this time with a bit of mineral violet to darken the green. I'm placing the color the same way but I'm using a thicker consistency at the bottom and I use a slightly thinner consistency as I get towards the top until I reach the very top with barely any paint left. Then I'm going to add more mineral violet in the mixture to paint the darkest areas of the leaves including the area in between those two leaves. For the cast shadow, I'm going to use a mix of sepia with mineral violet in a very thin consistency first and then I'm going to build up the color as I get closer to the cake. Here as you can see the surface of the paper was a bit too wet and it wouldn't take more color so I dried it off completely so I can add a slightly thicker consistency to make a smoother gradation with more contrast in value. Lastly, I'm going to add highlights to the icing and make it look more shiny. For this, I'm using a medium to thin consistency of bleedproof white. I'm placing it on the top of the cake as well as the right hand side of each section and then softening it with a clean damp brush. After that, I'm going to follow it up with a slightly thicker consistency and place it at the curve of each of those sections as well as the right hand side. 
And that's pretty much it for this Christmas bundt cake. I don't usually paint in this much detail for YouTube but I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box with the link to the outline as well. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!